Hi, I'm Kim McQuitty. I'm an author, a speaker, and a premarital counselor, and welcome to Praying for Your Future Husband. I love what God has called me to do. I love helping women become wife ready. It's my heartbeat. I'm here to serve. I'm here to help women win in their relationship. A little bit about myself. I got married at the age of 20 years old, and I didn't know very much about being a wife and, and marriage. The only blueprint that I had was that of my mom's marriage, my mom and dad, and that when I was taught at church. But I was always longing for more. I was longing for more insight, more wisdom, more on how to be a wife. My husband and I didn't lack love, but we lacked tools on how to build a marriage. Yes, we were in church. Yes, we served the Lord. But we needed practical insight on how to build a marriage. With little premarital education, zero premarital counseling, a whole lot of immaturity, we had quite a few hardships in our relationships. But it was those things that have created me to be the woman that I am today. Currently, I'm a widow, so I'm back in the waiting room. I'm believing God will send me another husband. I'm looking to be remarried again one day. I'm back in the waiting room waiting on myself because there's always room to grow no matter how much you already know. One thing I experienced in my marriage is how powerful prayer is, how powerful it is to pray for your husband, and that's what I want to speak with you today about. This isn't going to be just some regular talk about a general sense of prayer. However, I want to give you a strategy that will help you and that will result in answered prayers in your life. And that strategy is actually praying the word of God. When we pray the word of God, not just what we want, we will see tremendous things happen in our life. Jeremiah 1 and 12 said, God watches over his word to perform it. If God is watching over his word to perform it, we have to speak something so he'll have something to watch over. Mark chapter 4, John, J Jesus is talking about the parable of a seed. And the seed that he's talking about is the word of God. The word of God is the incorruptible seed. In the natural sense, it takes time for a seed to grow, but you first have to plant them. The sooner you get the seed in the ground, the sooner it'll begin to grow. It can't grow if it's not planted. Same way with the word of God. That is why it is so important that you are praying for your future husband now. God is governed by our prayer life. It grants him access into the affairs of our life. Prayer reinforces our need for God. If we're walking around with prayerlessness, we're saying, God, we don't need you. That's a form of pride, a form of arrogance, saying we've got it all figured out. We've got it all worked out. And that could not be further than the truth. Through prayer, we strengthen our relationship with God. We created an intimacy and a dependency on him. And I'm telling you, we need God. We need him not just in our marriages. We need him in our careers. We need him in our marketplace. We need him to be parents, those who are parents. We need God. 1 John 5 and 14 says the Bible, the Bible tells us if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Then in the next verse, it says, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have desired of him. If you are specific when you pray, God will answer you specifically. Again, God watches over his word to perform it. And the only prayers that can be prayed are the answered are the prayers that can be prayed. 100% of the prayers that you don't pray cannot be answered. For the duration of your marriage, you're going to have to cover your husband in prayer. That's one of the things God will require of you as his help meet. Your prayers will be more effective over your husband than, any, than anyone else's. God showed me that during a desperate time in my marriage when I'm looking for things to change. A mother's prayers for her child, fervent. No doubt. I am a witness that they are fervent. I have two daughters of my own and I know the power of prayer. I've seen it work in their own lives. But when a man marries, he leaves his father and his mother and becomes one with his wife. They are one team, one unit, unified in spirit. I like this quote that I read by an author who wrote a book on prayer. The strength of a man and his wife joined together in God's sight is far greater than the sum of, the, of, of each of the two individuals. The strength of a man and his wife joined together in God's sight is far greater than the sum of the strengths of each of the two individuals. That is a powerful statement. There is so much power and unity and power in becoming one. That's because the Holy Spirit unites them and adds power to their prayers. During a difficult season in my marriage, my friend gave me a book. She told me that she had used that book for her own self, that 
she had been going through it and she had uh, seen some changes in her relationship and she offered it and bought me one. And I thumbed through it and I kind of looked at it. And at the time I was kind of salty. I'm thinking, I don't, that's not anything I'm really interested in right now. I, my husband is not taking the lead like I would want him to. So I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to let him do the praying. I'm not going to do the praying for him. So I took the book and I put it on my shelf. Well, a year later when nothing had changed out of desperation, I remembered the book. So as I'm sitting there in the floor in my bedroom, I begin to thumb through the book and I just was reading the introduction. And one of the things the author said in the book, she said that if you are in a position where you are so hurt that you can't even pray for your husband as your husband, would you at least pray for him because he's God's son? That thing ripped into my heart some kind of way. I never looked at it that way. Like he's God's son before he was my husband. Can you at least just sow a seed of intercession into his life because he is the son of God before he was ever your husband. Then that moment I began to repent. I prayed and asked God to help me. And I told God that I was sorry. And as I'm sitting there, because prayer is not just a monologue, it's a dialogue, it's a two way conversation. God spoke to my heart and he said, Kim, he said, there was a pivotal season in Marvin's life when he was a teenager and he didn't have anyone covering him in prayer. He said, and as a result, a lot of the things that you're dealing with in his life right now is a result of him not being covered in prayer. As your wife, your prayers are more powerful than his mother's and I need you to cover him. And I even wept even more because I'm thinking I never saw it like that. God just always comes from a place of love. It's always about love. And I can hear you saying that, Kim, that's great. You, you're talking to us like we're already married. You know, I understand that you were married, but we're single. So we're not having husbands we're praying for right now. I'm still single. Neither am I. I'm not praying for a physical husband that I have every day in my life. I'm praying for my future husband. But let me give you some insight on why I'm talking so much about you already having a husband. Because whatever happens in the natural happens in the spirit realm first. In other words, God already knows who your husband is. He already knows who he is. And the prayers that you pray for him will never die. The best time to pray for your marriage is before you have one. That is the best time to pray for one. If you start praying for him now, that will be considered prayers of faith that you're sowing into his life. And God is watching over those words to perform them because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, real talk, I'm going to tell you real talk right now. There will come a time or two or three or four. There'll be several times in your season of your marriage that you will feel like praying for him. And that's the last thing you want to do is pray for him because you're so frustrated. You're so frustrated at what's going on. But let me tell you right now, let me give you a secret. Let me give you a weapon. Let me give you something I want to share with you that's very important that you can take into your marriage. And that's the difference between praying for your husband and praying about your husband. One is the prayer of faith. The other one is the prayer of frustration. Praying for him is covering him from a place of love because you want the will of God to be done in his life. There may be, you may be dealing with some issues, some shortcomings, some challenges, some things that are going on in your marriage. But overall, your prayer for him is, God, I want your perfect will to be going on in his life. Whatever's going on with him that I don't understand, that I can't get a hold on, the things maybe he may be dealing with that I, he haven't told me, but maybe he's told you. You're just praying for him that God would meet him in his place of need. You have your plan from a place of compassion. Praying about him, praying is a place of frustration, results in God change him. He's over here tripping. He's doing this, that, or the other. It's all the things of, he, of why he, God should be doing this, that, or the other to change this man. That's, a, that's praying about him. That's a place of pride. That's a place of arrogance. That's a place of frustration. And God is more than apt to p- answer prayers that are prayed in faith from a place of love. God is love. Let me tell you what happened to me when I was walking through a season of praying through f- over faith and frustration. My husband uh, had the opportunity to travel the world, to play all over the world, to play the drums for a very renowned Christian artist. Actually, he played the drums for several artists, but really known for the works for one particular artist. When my husband started first doing that, I wasn't on board. I wasn't on board because I had young daughters. Actually, I was pregnant with my youngest daughter and my oldest daughter was three years old at the time. I'm thinking, okay, I have little girls, two little girls. We have jobs. You know, we have responsibilities. It's, it's a lot to leave your family and to travel all over the world and play the drums. 
Well, so I wasn't on board. I'm thinking this isn't what I signed up for. He was not playing the drums full time when I married him. He had a job, a nine to five. So it was four years before I was actually on board because I finally, after four years of fighting his purpose, I decided to pray and ask God what did he have to say about it. I was so busy, had formed an opinion of what I thought we should be doing instead of going to God and asking him what was his will concerning us. When I finally broke down and prayed and asked God what was going on, God gave me the insight that this is his will for his life. And at that time, he began to do a work in my heart and my heart began to change. Okay, so we're several years into this and I'm good. I'm at home praying one day and I'm just lonely. I'm thinking, God, he's gone all the time. I say, I'm good with where he is. I know that's what he's supposed to do, but can't we just shift things a little bit? I'm raising these girls by myself. I didn't get married to be by myself. What can we do about it? I'm like, I, I felt like I was more complaining than I was praying. I'm thinking, God, I'm just tired. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of always going. I'm tired. I'm tired. I was kind of complaining and praying at the same time. So when I get done venting, again, prayer is a two-way conversation. God spoke to my heart and he said, Kim, for the next year, every time Marvin comes home, I want you to have a letter, a gift, a little uh, word of affirmation, a car, trinket, my husband like candy, a sweet favorite treat on his pillow when he comes home. I'm like, wait, God, there must have been some misunderstanding. I'm like, you want me to do what? I had a choice. If I was going to obey God and do what he asked me to do, or if I was going to sit there and keep, still keep going back with this same old complaint wrapped up in the form of a prayer and not get anywhere. So of course I chose to obey God. And every time my husband came home for a whole year, I had something on that pillow. Every time he would come home to a point, he would go straight to the pillow and he would read the card. And can I tell you what that did in my marriage without much effort? Just the fact that I obeyed that command of what God told me to do brought about a tremendous change in my relationship without a lot of effort. Obedience is always better than sacrifice. Because I believe in the power of prayer and because I believe that prayer, it works. I began to pray for my young, my daughters. I mentioned I have two daughters, their husbands when they were little girls, their adult daughters. Now they're adults. And there were four things in particular that I pray for for my daughters that I wanted to see in their husbands whenever God brought the man into their life. One is I pray that the man that they would marry would love God more than they love my daughters. Second, I pray that he would not be afraid to lead. Third, I ask God, you know, to bless them with someone who was financially astute because that was one area that my husband and I struggled so much in. I wanted someone to be able to come in and be able to lead and guide them in the area of finances and have more wisdom than we had so they don't have to go through some of the things that we went through. And number four, I pray that he will come from a family uh, of a godly heritage. My oldest daughter is seriously dating a man and he is all of those things. I began to sow the seed of intercession of prayer over their life as little girls. And that seed has taken root and manifested because those things are the will of God. That he will love God more than he loved my daughter. He will lead men. God called men to lead. He calls us to be wise with our finances and God inherited it. That was like a bonus. But here's something else that goes along with that story. A couple of years ago, my husband, my daughter and I, we were living together in our in, in Houston and we knew the transition was coming. We knew that it was time to move on. You know, God was transitioning us. My youngest daughter was away in college. Well, the time came and when the transition came, I had no idea we would be transitioning in two different parts of uh, uh, two different parts, two different states, parts of, of the United States. So God transitioned me to Atlanta and he transitioned her to where she is now. And shortly after she got there is when she met this wonderful man that I just explained to you. And I remember her calling me and she would call me. She would say, I need you to meet him. I can't wait for you to meet him. And I'm thinking, okay, I've never seen my daughter excited for me to meet anybody. And the fact that she's met somebody, I think I'm feeling some kind of way. And the reason I'm feeling some kind of way, I'm thinking, I say, okay, God, I'm not in the same city to see this man date my daughter. I'm not around to see how he treats her. I'm not around to see how he speaks to her, how they interact with one another. I said, I'm a premarital counselor. I'm wife ready. I'm the wife ready queen. I'm like, God, what in the world? 
how in the world is she going through a dating season and a dating time and I'm not there to witness what that looks like. Not that I would try to be speaking into it, not that I would try to be manipulating it. I just wanted to see if this man is who God had had for her. I'm the only one that he's going to have to come and marry, ask for her hand in marriage. Her dad's not here. God, how? Why did that happen? Oh my God. This was what I'm thinking. So prayer is my first response, not my last resort. So I pray. I said, God, I want to form a relationship with him. I want our relationship. He and I, I want to get to know him. I want to get to know his heart. I want to know who he is. I want to know what he's all about. I said, I can't do that in my area where I live. I said, I want to know who he is. I believe you sent him for her. But I just, it means a lot to me to get to know who he is. And so out of the blue, one day, I get a phone call. And he asked, and he asked me, was I busy? And we started talking and I didn't even, I didn't know his, the number because I didn't have his number in my phone. And the first call he was asking me, he just, you know, calling to ask me some things. He was concerned about my daughter. I think she was just tired all the time. And he was like, ma, I'm just really, he started, he called me mom the very first time I met him. He's an extrovert. He said, mom, I'm just really concerned about her. You know, she's tired. Da, 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 da. And from that day forth, he's been calling me all the time. We have our own relationship. We have our own friendship. And there's two things in particular that we talk about more than anything else. We talk about, outside of current events, we talk about the word of God. This man is fuego for God. He loves God. He loves my daughter. And the second thing we talk about on a regular basis is how he can become better, how he can better understand my daughter so he can become a better man for her. The power of prayer, the power of prayer. Now, if that worked for my daughter's husband, what about you praying for your own? What about you praying for the man that you believe in God's going to bring into your life? And let me say this right here. I need to interject just because women have done this in the past and you may be one of them. I'm praying that you're not. Your current husband is not married to another woman. If you're praying that God will break up a marriage to bring that man to you, or you believe the man that you I believe in God for is married to somebody else. He's going to leave her and find his way to you. That's not God. God is not going to answer a prayer. He's not going to break up a family. He doesn't have to break up a family to bring you a man. According to Mr. Google, if you Google it, there's 3.7, 3.5, somewhere between there, billion men on the planet. Why does he have to tear up somebody's marriage to bring you their husband? That makes no sense. That is not God. That is not the word and God will not honor that prayer. So you're wasting your time. If you're believing you're going to pray and believe God to bring you a man that does not belong to you, you should be praying that God will keep that man's marriage together, especially if there's children involved. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. And I know you do, but I'm solidifying it. So in my closing, I want to say I would be remiss if I told you, if I did not tell you that the enemy hates marriage, he does. He hates everything that it represents because it is a reflective of the love that Christ has for his church, the bride of Christ, that love that a husband and wife have between each other. It is reflective of that. And he hates it. He hates it. He hates every bit of it. He hates marriage. He hates, he's a hater and he is going to come for your marriage. And when I'm telling you, it will be the enemy coming for your marriage, not your husband, because the enemy is the enemy, not your husband. Listen to me again. The enemy is the enemy, not your husband. When you get married, you are not just signing up for the romance. You are signing up for the warfare. He's coming for your marriage and you you and your husband are going to have to battle for your marriage. Okay, I've talked about marriage. I've talked about the importance of praying for your marriage, your future husband and all what that looks like. The what, the why, the how. But I want to give you tools. There's no way I can share how important it is for you to pray for your future husband and not arm you with those with those tools to do that. So today I am releasing my ebook, Cover Him, Prayers for Your Future Husband. I wrote this book for you. I wrote this book for me. These are prayers, specific prayers. I mentioned that prayers are prayers specifically. The answer specifically because God watches over them to, to perform them. I wrote this book for us so we can pray over our future husbands. I wrote this book in a way that it is praying the word of God. So you're sowing the seed of the word of God where God can watch over that word to perform it. 
some of the areas we're praying for him is spiritual life, wisdom, humility, leadership, character, finances. That's a huge thing in marriage. Integrity, that he will have a teachable spirit, accountability. Men have uh, anger issues, challenges, a prayer in there for him. His temptation, another issue for men. One of the other things I put in there was prayer for the fatherless son. If you marry a man who did not grow up in a home with his father, he has some challenges. He has some brokenness and that man needs to be covered in prayer. Now is the time to be covering that in prayer. His, uh, his mind, priority, favor, over 30 different subject matters that I've written in the book. I've also written a prayer for you to pray over yourself as a single. And I also included a prayer of faith that you can pray in faith for your future marriage. You can get those books. You can get that ebook at areyouwifeready.com forward slash store. Areyouwifeready.com forward slash store. It's a digital download. Download. It's an ebook. You can have it on your tablet, on your phone. You can print it out. I have mine in my phone. If I'm sitting in Atlanta traffic, I can just scroll up and start praying those prayers over my future husband. Now, I mentioned to you in the video that I had something very special that I wanted to share with you if you stayed to the end. And this is what I'm really excited about. I'm excited about the book on prayer, but this is what I'm really, really excited about. For the past few years, I've been doing what you call Wife Ready Boot Camp. So Wife Ready Boot Camp is an opportunity for you to go through a curriculum that you can get yourself prepared for marriage. It walks you through so many different subject matters as being whole, knowing who you are, sexual purity, how to identify Mr. Right, and all those other things that come with the road to marital readiness. I've had over 400 girls who have gone through this boot camp, and the, the, the testimony that I have gotten have been tremendous. In the past year and a half, I've been doing them as webinars, but now I have taken the, the curriculum and I've packaged this as an individual study that you can do with professional videos, a workbook with seven lessons. And this is how I want to be a blessing to you until May the 23rd. Okay. The pre-orders go on right now. I'm taking pre-orders. The book ships on June the 9th, but until May the 23rd, if you order the curriculum, the workbook until May 23rd, I'm going to give you the videos for free. I'm going to give you all seven videos that goes with the workbook for free. If you pre-order by Saturday, May 23rd. It's my gift to you. No strings attached. When the book shifts, when the workbook shifts, the physical workbook is a physical workbook. When that workbook shifts to, ships to you, you will have a code that you can download and you can get the free videos to go along with the workbook. It's because I want you to win. I love to give. I am a giver and this is my gift to you. So if you go out to areyouwifeready.com and forward slash store, Pre-order the book. When the book ships on June the 9th, I will send you the code and you can download the videos and you can go through the Wife Ready study at your own pace. I'm so excited that I get to share with you. I'm so excited I get to pour into your hearts. Also, let me say this, that website is a blog. So there are other articles up there. There are other tidbits. There's other things up there that, that will prepare you to help you be wife ready on your road to marital readiness. There's one out there called, is he husband material? You know, is he a date or just a soulmate? What do you do after the altar? So I've just, I'm pouring up my heart. Everything I have to give, I'm giving you what I wish that I had at 20 years old when I'm walking around tapping women on the women on the shoulder, asking them, how do you be a wife? And that's real talk. I did do that. So I, I'm being that to the ones who don't know how to be married, because if you're single, you don't know how, how could you? So I feel like I'm going, I'm going to be the one that God has calling me to do that. And I'm making myself available and making those resources for you. So again, go out, areyouwifeready.com, get your ebook, cover him, grab a copy of the uh, workbook, pre-order, and I will send you the videos on June 9th. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. I thank you for who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for this opportunity that we get to come and we get to share our hearts about praying for our future husbands. God, we know he's out there somewhere. God, we're going to sow the seed of intercession over the, over the life of your son and believe for astounding things to happen for in him, even though we have not even met him yet because our prayers never die. You're, die. you're taking those prayers and they're coming up as a memorial before you and you're watching over them so that can be done and made manifest in his, in his life. 
So God, we thank you, Lord. I thank you for your daughters. I thank you for those who are preparing their hearts, those who have been in the waiting room for a long time. I have a burden for them. God, the heaviness, the weariness, God. But Galatians 6 and 9 is coming to mind. It says, do not be weary in well-doing for a due season. You will reap, but just don't faint. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't change. Don't turn. Don't get ahead of God. But God is preparing someone specifically for a specific time in a specific season, and he will be worth the wait. So God, I thank you. I honor you. I praise you for this time that we've had together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.